Yeah, they started quite. Hello, hello everyone. Uh, we are live from DocuDays studio that was set up uh, in the office of DocuDays and I would say it's an amazing setup. I didn't believe uh, that all those technical stuff can fit in such a small room. I'm Ilya Glotstein, uh, co-founder of uh, Cinema Kino 42 and uh, documentary producer. And I am today here to moderate the discussion about the future of, a doc of documentary film distribution about festivals, uh, broadcasters, VODs and uh, all these uh, things and uh, we will talk to quite an, an impressive uh, uh, pack of professionals from all uh, kinds of perspectives and experiences and I will now introduce them. Uh, so today with us is uh, Diana Tabakov from The Films. Uh, it's a VOD platform specialized in documentary film. Diana is in Prague now. Hi, Diana. Uh, raise your hand so Hi. people would, uh, s uh, would see and recognize you. And uh, we also have Mael. Uh, I'm, I have troubles with, uh, with the surname, but Mael, you will now say properly how it is spelled. Uh, it's not Genex. No. Ginegas. Ginegas, yes, okay, I can hear you now. Uh, Mael is yeah. a representative of sales agent, uh, Cat and Dogs. And by the way, Cat and Dogs is distributing uh, Earth is uh, Blue Like an Orange, the Ukrainian film that is uh, set to Ukrainian premiere at DocuDSUA. And uh, the, uh, Renat Puchowski, the director of uh, Zagreb Dogs. Hello, Renat. Uh, Renat is in Zagreb, Hi. from what I understand. And it's also raining in Zagreb, as in Kiev, as uh, we just got to know. And uh, uh, Ulrich Brohagen from MDR, uh, the, uh, one of uh, public broad big public broadcasters in Germany. And Ulrich is uh, commissioning editors for document, head of documentaries and commissioning editor for documentary film. And uh, Kutaiba uh, Barahamyi is a uh, film editor from Paris, uh, based in Paris, but. Uh, 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 and you are now in Paris, and it's, we don't still know what what weather in Paris now, could I? But tell us what's what's there. It's it's raining. It's it's good. It's raining, but it's sunny at the same time. So. Yeah, it's it's good. We all have different weathers, but we are still in in one room because uh, I know that Diana is uh, missing sun that is outside. But uh, just after we finish, she can go and uh, enjoy uh, May weather. And uh, yeah, so uh, I will probably start talking as I, I will also represent here uh, not only the moderator person, but also uh, the also production and uh, cinema uh, field of uh, documentary distribution because I kind of do both of it in Ukraine. Uh, and uh, so probably to get uh, to give some information from people who don't know what's happening with the film uh, after it is finished it is distributed and uh, to distribute uh, you have different options first usually first of all it gets to the festivals uh, where it meets the the most motivated audience the most interest the people who are mostly interested in documentaries and the film is successful it travels a lot of festivals and it usually has its national premiere at, at national festival and then it uh, then it, it goes to broadcasters to the tv stations and uh, then it goes to vod platforms it gets online and people who facilitate this process are sales agents who own the rights and mael is representing this uh, part of our uh, discussion and of this uh, strip docu distribution stream and sells and uh, tries to monetize uh, all that process. So documentary is not the most profitable uh, part of, uh, of uh, film business, definitely. Uh, yeah, so we'll probably start, uh, ah, yeah, and why, why, why do we discuss it now and what we want to know, what is happening 
with the market uh, during and after Corona crisis because it all changed a lot because now the festivals get online as Docu Days, for example, uh, as you can see, we are not meeting in a, in a big uh, Joftin uh, hall or we don't uh, get into industry drinks uh, as we, of course, would every one of us would wish. Uh, but we are uh, sitting in our small cabinets with our Zooms and uh, computers on and uh, yeah everyone from what i see already set up a proper uh, zoom room uh, because it need to be done properly and uh, i can see my air we were talking from the same uh, set a uh, couple of uh, days ago so yes everything is changed cinemas are closed festival are getting online or cancelled uh, and now an interesting thing is getting with vod's and and uh, uh, broadcasters because usually there was a there, there was a window between them uh, and now everything is mixed and let's talk about what it what about it what's happening so I will start from persons who actually create the film uh, Kutaiba uh, your film uh, where you was an editor uh, was just world premiered at the festival in uh, Cinema de Real, right, in, uh, in Paris, actually, uh, but it was already online because it was in March and it was already a, a lockdown. Please tell me, because you are an experienced filmmaker and you traveled pre festivals previously, what was your experience of premiering, of world premiering online? How was that? Well, um, thank you, Ilya. Uh, first of all, I had two films. One of them I've edited and directed, and the second one I've edited. And uh, the both of them was uh, world premiere in uh, Cinema du Real. Uh, the thing is that Cinema du Real was, uh, had the opening at uh, in the evening and the second day it was, uh, in, actually in the evening, the president said that the gathering was forbidden. So they decided the next day that to, ca to put the festival online. So I think it's what the first maybe festival to go online without any kind of uh, preparation uh, to be online. Uh, so um, how was the experience? I, would, I wouldn't say that there's, there was any uh, because uh, it was the first uh, week of this pandemic in France. Uh, everyone, everything, everybody was thinking about what's going to be happening, how to shift from uh, one thing, one life to another style of life. So, um, and the festival with all kind of uh, work that they have done for the last year, it was kind of impossible for them to just cancel because it's it's really a lot of work. And uh, so they decided to go online. For, for us as a filmmakers, or uh, uh, we, like, I don't think that it, it was the right uh, solution at the moment, but of course it was a panic. It was, we, we have, we needed to do something. Uh, as, a, as a world premiere, I would, or any premiere, I would not prefer any way to have an online premiere. Uh, maybe afterwards to have like uh, online premiere it would it it's like something very good but in the beginning like um i i hadn't had any uh, uh feedback on the films uh neither the other directors neither the people who was accred had accreditation and wanted to see the films were were able actually to watch the film because of this situation that you are not going to be like thinking of watching documentary films at your home when you are stuck and you have to think of, about all this stuff. So uh, I wouldn't say that the, the experience was uh, was quite... Uh, of course, when, when you decide to go to a festival, you decide, you choose a festival from its also career, reputation, and you know what you expect. Uh, an online festival, it's completely different type of festival, which is really need to be prepared and think, thought. And I don't think that we are able today to do that kind of uh, online festival that's going to be very successful because it's different kind of audience, a different kind of tools, a different kind of uh, promotions. So, um, yeah, you know, for a film without, like, you know, even the simplest thing, or without a trailer, uh, it's very difficult to be online. When you are, when you are in a, a physical festival, uh, you have the, the, the 
the schedule and you see what film you're gonna watch there's films that just people advise you to see there's some films that fits your schedule you go to see uh, in online it's completely different it's becoming more a consumption of, of film uh, uh, you you just uh, you don't know like even if you limit the vision uh, the the number of views you don't know who saw it? Did they really saw it? So it's kind of, it's kind of, it was very, not very the best uh, experience, I would say. Yeah, of course, we are now all, I think, uh, lacking that physical connection and physical um, things that are happening non-planned because in Zoom it can only be planned, otherwise only maybe you, uh, that you can get in a, in a wrong, in a wrong meeting. That's the only and plan thing that can happen online but uh, uh, of course uh, I think it's just uh, I hope it's, it's just a temporary thing uh, with festivals online and probably we should uh, go to the festival side of that problem or of that phenomena and talk to Nenad, Nenad Pukowski, director of Zagreb Talks uh, who was I think also one of the first festivals that went online and it was not the only trouble with that, there was an earthquake during uh, during Zagreb docks. So, Nenad, uh, uh, how did you survive all that, and what's your perspective on 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 that? Well, the Americans are usually saying, uh, "What doesn't kill you makes you stronger." Do you and feel that? Uh, are you stronger now? <laughs> Absolutely, you can see it. Uh, the situation was like this we had to postpone the festival or to cancel at the moment uh five days before the, uh, it had to start uh six days we canceled it on uh, monday and uh, the opening was planned for the um, for the coming sunday and uh it was not an easy uh, decision but uh, we decided to go two ways uh, we decided to have our industry uh, part online because we believe that the advantages of uh, having it are bigger than disadvantages of not having it at all. And uh, that's because we believe that this kind of interaction, which very often in industry is a one-on-one -on -one anyhow, and it's, about, it's in a small group, and it's not a big public event generally. Uh, we believe that we could do it uh, uh, through Zoom and it was, I have to say, quite successful. We did it as planned in the week in which we planned it. We, we switched everything in five days and uh, there were 25 people, uh, 25 people uh, taking part in the industry, what we call Zagreb Docs Pro. And uh, the results were uh, really amazing, uh, both uh, content-wise and also technically. Uh, uh, the only, I would say, difference was that the, the pitching itself, because uh, we want to be sure that it's going to be delivered technically okay, the pitch itself was recorded and then played back uh, at the moment when it would uh, take place yeah, on in the schedule of the pitching session. And of course, but then of course, uh, Q&As and all discussions were live. But the pitching together with the trailer or teaser were recorded. So we didn't have people, you know, uh, being uncomfortable in front of the camera instead of the panel. Uh, that much for the for the uh, uh, industry part. However, we decided quite early because we knew that there is a possibility that we are not going to have the festival. We were, uh, we knew that uh, it's an option. Uh, we decided not to go online uh, with the festival, neither at that very moment, not nor in the uh, uh, things future in terms of weeks or maybe months, because we believe that a festival is uh, interaction of people. It's not watching films. 
and I am personally always trying to look from the uh, uh, from the side of the audience because I believe that audience is what makes the festival. The interaction between uh, filmmakers, films, and audience. And of course, professionals and critics and all of that. But I like people going to the cinema, watching films, discussing films, asking questions, having coffee. And all this life, uh, we believe, uh, cannot happen online. You can show films. But frankly, uh, most of the films you will see one way or the other online. Sooner or later. Legally or not. You can see the films. Now, uh, so we decided to wait. Uh, and uh, I believe, um, I still believe it was a good decision. Uh, it was uh, a tough decision because uh, it's a very expensive decision because we already spent uh, some money, uh, quite a bit of money, uh, and you know, uh, there are expenses that we had to cover and so on and so on. But in terms of thinking about the, 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 uh, the, this year, this year's edition, we plan, I will, I will just say it now uh, so I don't take your time uh, later. Uh, we, we plan to have the festival uh, uh, in the second part of the year, if it uh, is going to be possible. Uh, probably uh, a bit smaller edition. But we are, of course, facing a number of problems which uh, all the festivals uh, which are doing the same will face, which is the films themselves, this, the, the filmmakers, distributors, other festivals, premieres, because when you shift a festival for, let's say, six months, a lot of things are going to change. Uh, the, the dynamic of a year between the festivals, so there are a lot of issues, a lot of problems. Then there is the financing, then there is the, the, there is the um, ministry, uh, the film institute, the sponsors. So there are a lot, a lot of down the road, I see a lot of issues and problems uh, with uh, postponing the festival. Uh, the economic situation, which is tough uh, all around the world and which is especially tough in my country because of a lot of cultural institutions being hit by the earthquake. But uh, as I said, just to uh, end for now, we are planning to have a real festival live. Uh, I'm in contact with a lot of people in the region, in Croatia and also worldwide. Uh, and uh, I see that there, there is maybe 40, 60 percent in my experience of people who decided to have um, online festivals. Uh, uh, and about 60 in my approximation uh, to have it, to wait or to try to have it, to postpone it for the, uh, for the autumn and winter which is another problem because they're going to be, you know, jam-packed uh, 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 scheduling calendar in the, in the autumn and winter. You will have uh, every two days another festival somewhere in Europe or world because it's going to uh, go all together. So that's the situation in Zagreb, that situation with Zagreb Docs. We also, as a film production, we put a number of our films online for free uh, for people to watch because people had to stay at home. Uh, we also had some Zoom discussions about uh, the situation here. But the festival itself, for the moment, is postponed and we hope to have it this year. Yeah, I hope uh, as well that it's, it's going to uh, be still this year and uh, you can still enjoy the physical audience and the directors can also see the reactions of people and uh, I felt and I think everyone felt with, uh, with that lockdown that uh, the whole industry is very fragile and then 
when you take one piece of the whole chain, everything just crashes down and we now have to in, in invent new ways, new ways of uh, doing things and uh, yeah, well, that's, uh, and that's where we are now. We are now talking and trying not just to uh, represent the position but also to try to understand how it can be. And uh, yeah, maybe let's talk to Ulrich, uh, who is usually, would usually go like, that would be the next chain of the film, uh, next chain of the film travel, uh, the, uh, the broadcaster, MDR. Uh, Ulrich, is it a problem for MDR, for example, if the film had an online premiere or had a VOD release, uh, usually? Probably not. No, no, no. There's no problem for us. And uh, well, one of the big differences between broadcasters and, and film festivals is we keep on broadcasting. So we didn't stop anything. We didn't have to postpone a couple of films. We had to postpone a couple of films. Um, but um, we broadcast. Um, we changed the way we work. We work from home, of course. But uh, um, people watch television more than before. Um, it's not the hour of documentaries, of course. It's the hour of news. People watch news. Um, but um, we have the impression, because there was a big discussion before the crisis about uh, public broadcasters um, like MDR. Are they too big? Do we need them? And so on and so on. And uh, um, we all hope that we will get a bit strengthened that we will become strengthened through the crisis um, uh, because we have the impression, impression that people want to watch us and they want our programs and they need our programs to be informed. Um, regarding documentaries, um, we immediately noticed that the, the filmmakers uh, are in a very, very awkward, bad position. and. Um, what did we do? We, we sent out a call for ideas. We called it Corona Creative. And uh, uh, we uh, said, well, send us your ideas, send us an estimate of the budget, short films, five to 15 minutes. And uh, um, well, we got 300 proposals within one and a half weeks. And in the end, we only could, uh, uh, could uh, commission 20 of them. And uh, this was one of the, 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 the small actions we've taken um, to, to, to facilitate, to, to, to help the broadcasters. And um, as I said, um, business goes on um, and uh, we're still working and we're still broadcasting. Regarding the festivals, um, for me, a video festival or a video market is something very, very different. When I decide to go to a festival and to, or to go to a market, then I'm there. Then I'm there and I can talk to the people. Um, for example, Sunnyside, I go to Sunnyside of the Dock. It's every year in La Rochelle. This year it's going to be a video uh, conference or whatever. Um, of course, I will take part in some of these pitches, conferences, but um, it is an engagement from my side of 10, 20 percent, because 80 percent of the day I will stand in my stay in my virtual office and do other things. Um, and I think no one will be able to replace these festivals, these markets, these meetings, these events. Perhaps there are too many in Europe, maybe, but it's not me to, to decide this. But um, I do regret that all these. Uh, events have to had to be cancelled or will have to be cancelled um, even if you look at, at a festival like Doc Leipzig uh, by the end of October no one knows I don't really know what is going to happen whether it's going to take place or not um, no idea um, and um, well what will happen next year and this would be a question from me to the to the organizers of the festival um, who is, who will be financing the festivals, the markets um, next year? And uh, uh, will, will there be as many as were before? I, know, I don't know, I'm not sure. But from the perspective of a broadcaster, 
I need, we all need, all our commission ed editors need these festivals, we need these markets and we need these pitches to get the ideas of the filmmakers and, um, uh, well, we miss something. I do miss something. Well, if, did you participate in any online markets uh, like Vision Trail did and uh, Zagreb Dogs did uh, online industry? Did you already uh, have this experience? Not yet, no. But I will participate at uh, Sunnyside, as I said, and because I go there every year. Um, uh, but the thing is, you're sitting in your office and to go on a trip, to go in a place, you're there for two, three, four days. And you meet many, many, many people and you do it exclusively. When you're at home, in your office or in your virtual office, um, well, it is two hours. You invest two or three hours in a virtual conference. But um, to go to Kiev, to go to wherever, this is a decision and this is something different. And uh, I can only say no one can replace this. Yeah, let's go to Mayel, who is a, is a businesswoman here, who is dealing, uh, because I think uh, the, all the previous speakers were mostly dealing uh, on, the, on the side of film as, a, as a creators or as, a, as like festivals curators or as, as like Ulrich as a producer, commissioning editor of documentaries from the public TV. And now you, Mail, are working in a company that is making money is making money on films and uh, you actually participate in, in several, I think, uh, industries now. How was, uh, how was it on your side? Uh, was it more efficient? Is it, I think it's worth uh, a bit cheaper than usual, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I would think about it. Oh, uh, my, uh, I cannot hear you. I wonder if people can hear, hear you. Mm, let me ask our technical group. Can you hear me, Mayel? I can mm. hear you. We switch it. Okay, then oh, maybe you can talk uh, at some point when you decided to stop, stop because I cannot hear you. But oh, maybe now I can hear. Or can no. you hear me? Yes, I no. can hear you right now. Okay. So yes, I was. I took part in a in a few um, online markets. I think that's the part of the festival's uh, experience that's the mo that's the easiest to uh, to put online, as uh, Nenad said uh, before. And I think it, it's efficient. You lose a lot of things. Obviously, you can't speak to your colleagues about their impressions and stuff. But it's still work can be done, and I think it's um, it's uh, it's still efficient. I, there's fine tuning to be to be done, but it's uh, it works. It will never replace a, a physical experience, but um, but I think the market side of things, yes, is uh, is working. Then I don't. I think the festival is a uh, very different uh, side. Yeah, but uh, with all this situation, when uh, the cinema stop showing films and festivals actually. Uh, stop doing it physically, some, dis some postponing, some cancelling and some deciding to go online and they come to you when you already agreed the fee, for example, for a film to yeah. screen uh, in the cinema and they say, okay, Mael, now we want to screen your film online. Uh, what, how was that? Uh, how did you make the decisions? And, well, uh, it's, it's, it's one thing to, re to respond to a crisis and to like especially the first festival that got cancelled and were in a very difficult situation we had to uh, uh, show solidarity and adapt to whatever uh, they were deciding to do but now it's getting to be very different because it's going to last probably much more longer than we wish and so the decisions are completely different and and we're not really part of the decision of a festival as to uh, you know whether they will choose to go online or, or postpone. But uh, going online, it, it, it has a lot of uh, ripple effect that are not always good. So what would be your usual uh, answer to those festivals who say, who were, who were planning to do it offline, but then they say, okay, we want the same feel from you, but we want to show it online. Do you usually agree on that? Or uh, you say, no, let's wait for a physical premiere. Well, we usually we've we've agreed so far 
but it depends also on the countries like some countries like in the US for example they are able to geoblock uh, regionally so by state so it's less of a problem it means that we can keep um, accepting other festivals in other states so the film keeps circulating um, some some countries have like one very big festival and or barely have any other festivals to go to but in other countries where there are where usually a film travels a lot and too many festivals then it's going to be a problem because if they go online if one festival decides to go online basically they show to the whole country so they kill the possibility of the film to be shown anywhere else and usually they don't provide a screening fee that is that should that compensate so it, it's it's a very tricky situation that we're facing now and the decision is uh, difficult to take did you did you skip some proposals like that i'm uh, holding some right now <laughs> okay and yeah. how is the, how is the business uh, altogether uh, were there ma much more request for the films uh, would gener that would generate you revenues or not really? It, it affects you mean on, um, oh. obviously the revenues from festivals is, is crushing and, and that's also when you realize the importance of the whole um, ver variety of festivals because usually the big ones are the, are the, are the ones that give films visibility but the smaller ones are, are the one that uh, contribute to to the revenues that a filmmaker that we can make, but also the the filmmakers, and some some films are really having a great festival life and and have a harder time getting a broadcast deal. So far, we see that the I mean that's what uh, was said before the the steadiest as, um, field in the industry is broadcast. They Obviously, they have a captive audience now locked at home and a lot of people watch TV. So it's um, so I think yeah, the decision that will be made in uh, broadcast is also important. I don't know. I'm not part of this decision either. So yeah, I can we we do we do make uh, more a bit more sales and there's an appetite for uh, documentaries, but it's going to be hard for the ones, the one premiering now and the one to come, it's, uh, it's going to be more difficult. Yeah, from what I see in the Ukrainian market, at least, uh, for there, there's a big appetite and there is a big lack and need for new content because people tend to consume much more, as, you, as Ulrich already said. So did you in any, any way benefit out of this uh, uh, increased uh, need? Uh, for, for example, I VOD platforms. We, <laughs> I wouldn't say we've been, we, I don't think uh, we're making more revenue now that we were before. Uh -huh. There's also a lot of uncertainties about, you know, the, the future. The, the, hard, the hardest thing I think is to, right now, is to work with so much uh, uncertainties as to how long it's going to last. Same. I mean, maybe broadcasters also will have um, uh, production on hold and will maybe acquire more in the long run. Maybe they will rerun other films uh, because they, I mean, it's different budget also. I don't know if they will shift from production to acquisition. Yeah. It's, uh, we'll, we'll see what uh, is decided. It's an uncertain world and uh, this is the world where Ukraine usually lives uh, and having such a thing every at least 10 years. So welcome, uh, we are kind of experienced in that. And uh, yeah, let's go to VOD platforms. Uh, Diana, I think that you are one that uh, benefited the most out of all this crisis. I'm not sure if we can say so, but uh, probably your revenues got up. Tell us about it. Yeah, I almost feel like the bad guy here now after hearing all the you know, <laughs> contra I, VOD, sure, contra sure, digital sure. releasing and everything. So <laughs> I, I, I put um, you the last well, on purpose, you know, to keep some optimism uh, at, at, the, at the last uh, of the first part of our presentation. So tell, give us some optimism yeah. here. It is also very significant because uh, VOD used to always be at the end, but now it actually gets to the beginning. And that is what is the stressful part, is the pressuring of films of deciding now whether to go online at this position 
and not when they choose. So I think that's a bit of the uh, most stressful part of this whole situation. But um, yeah, I mean, for sure, for us, we have experienced it uh, quite radically because uh, the, as the restrictions came, uh, the One World Film Festival was uh, cancelled uh, in the middle. So very quickly in one afternoon, we organized uh, switching from uh, offline activity into a crisis mode of, um, of going online with uh, the rest of the films that haven't been screened. And for us it, and the festival, it was an interesting experience uh, because it actually got um, uh, in average up to the numbers that they would ha get if uh, the cinemas would be open. So it covered the tickets and so on number wise. Of course, it will never, um, it will never, of course, uh, substitute the experience of going to the cinema. We all know this. Uh, our VOD platform also works uh, with films that are mainly made for cinema. So, uh, so yeah, so I think uh, for, for this, uh, as Mayo said as well, I think in a, there's one thing is a crisis mode and then there's another thing, which is a regular uh, distribution. But also I think it's interesting what we can learn from the crisis. Um, because I mean, from our point of view as a VOD, um, we did want to be there for our friends from the film festivals. Um, we know that they are the ones who give the life to the film. That's where they start. The curators, they, uh, they watch, they pick and they discover films for us and everything. Um, so yeah, so for us, it was uh, mainly an uh, act of uh, being there very flexibly, finding out solutions. Um, also somehow keep revenues for filmmakers because we send 60% of the revenues to the rights holders. Um, all the business models with all the festivals were different. Now we're uh, having the grand angle uh, competition of uh, Visions Real Mio online on Dock Alliance films. And uh, we're planning um, a, a cooperation uh, still quite openly with the uh, Sheffield Film Festival. And um, so each, each of the model is very, is very different. And uh, for example, with the Neon, uh, the business model was more set that uh, the festival actually covers the screening fees uh, of the films and we stream the film for free uh, for one day, for 24 hours. And each of the film is limited to 500 audiences. Um, with, with One World Festival, it was, it was a 50-50% model, so we kept some revenues and the 50% went to the festival as if adopting the system they would have with the cinemas anyway. Um, so it's also with each festival, we somehow find a, a, a new way. What is very difficult to, to cover with VOD, I think we, we can really reach out to new audiences, which wouldn't really go to the cinemas. Uh, or to the festival, they're from different cities and so on. Um, we, can, uh, we can somehow keep the promotion of directors and producers on, we can keep it up, we can still keep the communication on. So these are the things that I think are, are very positive of it. And I think also, but of course, the difficult part for us is how to cover the communication of the director with the audiences. That is something that we miss very much. And I think every online festival, every VOD platform is somehow trying to, uh, to bridge this gap with let's say Q and A's, live Q and A's and so on. And I think that is something that we would like to, you know, adopt this experience and try, try to develop it more also technologically for, uh, for the, you know, just also for the regular working of our VOD platform somehow to think, of course, I think it's not absolutely possible, uh, but that is one of the parts that I think that the people are missing the most, the, the communication of the director with the, with the, with the audiences. Um, but um, our platform also works in various territories. Uh, so, and we must, we, I must say that our visibility and the revenues uh, grew five times since the coronavirus. Um, so it is very interesting. We, we accelerated the acquisitions very much. So we ha were planning to, uh, to acquire uh, 400 or 300 films for the year. And we did that in the, la in the first three months already. So um, we had a very quick process. Also, when you know that the cinemas are closed, we tried to uh, get films online that were uh, stopped in the middle of the distribution. 
most of the films like that we have already now in specific territories and uh, now we're in the point where there are producers still waiting for premieres and they're hesitant to to skip the online premiere in a cinema and still waiting for the pre and, or or go online with the premiere itself with smaller and as usual my, my our experience is that uh, the smaller the production, uh, the more experimental you are in uh, your strategies. So, um, so some of the documentary films just didn't want to wait and went online straight away uh, without the uh, without actually uh, uh, waiting for the cinema. And there, it is a lot of work for outreach, of course. I think uh, just the last point I would say is the experience, I think, because a lot of cinemas are also going online, right? They're trying to somehow find a substitution for that. And I think that specifically, because we are used to this, but specifically cinemas or other organizations that are suddenly going online is, 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 is quite difficult because uh, uh, it's mainly about the very popular films that work. You know the, the things that would actually be popular anyway but if you want to release a smaller more let's say avant-garde or something less popular it's very difficult to build up the 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 the, uh, the label the brand the interest the buzz uh, just solely online and i think that is a very you know important experience for theatrical distributors as well um to release new films unknown film uh well, not you know like not very well known or fundamental directors yet so uh yeah so that's uh just uh, of course our platform has been used to that and uh, we were also developing our own brand so so audiences know what they find at our platform and then we can afford to also promote filmmakers that are not that popular in all the territories. Um, so then you need to have at least something that you can actually work with, a specific you know, promotional tools. Festivals have their label, the VOD platform has to have their label as well to uh, survive with a specific identity and with that to communicate to uh, audiences. Uh -huh. But um, you know, uh, it's a bit, uh, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, I mean, do you, I think that you now feel a big responsibility uh, because uh, you are the one who can actually deliver the films from uh, that would usually go to festivals or go to cinemas. Uh, so all these people, maybe besides Ulrich, because he has his own channel of distribution films, so you are kind of in the same positions, but uh, probably you are more open to different all kinds of content because VOD platform probably can uh, can uh, can s host much more films than than the uh, standard bro broadcaster would do. Uh, so, can, like, were you ready for such a such for such a challenge? Uh, were your servers okay? Didn't they burn because of you got five times more streamers streamings going on, uh, Diana? Yeah. No, it was technologically, it was everything okay, but of course we had to implement uh, the online chat to our website because the more people you have coming, the more problems you have technologically with payments, for example. Uh, something happens uh, every, every time something happens. So uh, uh, we did have to implement specific tools and uh, I mean, our team is totally fantastic and we had uh, the peak as if we were organizing a festival ourselves. Um, so, yeah, I don't think there was a, there was a technological problem. It was more about very much thinking of how to communicate everything because, I mean, as I said, we have a different version for Czech Republic, Polish and Slovak territories, and we have a different version for Americas, a different version for Europe, and a different version for Asia. So, I mean, you need to think about how to communicate in specific countries and how to somehow adjust the promotional campaign. So we started acquiring a lot of films, um, and also uh, trying to, and also, you know, sending out newsletters every day, not only twice a week, and, um, and trying to adjust in the way of how to communicate everything. And I think now we're just having the time of having, taking a breath, and now, you know, let's get to the concept more and let's think of uh, more creative ways again, how to, how, to, how to work with all the new films that we got and how to actually keep our audiences active because spring is also scary for uh, cinemas mm -hmm. and uh, any, any VOD platforms. We all want to go outside. So 
technologically it was not uh, not that such a problem and uh, we did try to implement new new tools for each festival uh, yeah. for example with neon also uh, we have uh, the audience award there so we had to have a specific uh, technological tool that is the same for them and us in order to vote for uh, the best film and so on and yeah so it's like between now uh, need to yeah, so now I would out. step in as a cinema owner and the, and, the, and the theatrical distributor in Ukraine and I would say that uh, as much as I think uh, Diana is happy with uh, her revenues, uh, I'm not that w I would not be that happy in the future when the cinemas are open uh, to work with the films that got these online premieres. Uh, for example, uh, I would, as a cinema, I would like to get some films that were screened at DocuDays at uh, DocuSpace. Uh, during the festival, but from what I know it was a huge success of the platform and it was for free and I know that several thousands of people you already watched these films so as a distributor I would think twice if I should now work with the film because it's a usual number of uh, admissions in the cinemas in Ukraine for a good documentary film and uh, as a cinema I will also think if I should take uh, if I should take the film that has already uh, almost used all of its audience it has. So it's all, uh, we are all interconnected and where one wins somehow another loses, it's not still the win-win uh, situation. So uh, that can be a problem for the theatrical people. And uh, at that point I would also like to introduce our active audience from, uh, we were distributing a, a form where everyone who would like to join our discussion would uh, uh, sign in and we have Maria Panomarova, a Ukrainian documentary director and uh, filmmaker and producer and she has something to add to our discussion. Masha goes on. Go on. Um, hi everyone. Uh, first of all, super interesting discussion. Really, really nice to see all different angles and uh, really happy for the films, DA films. It's, it's a great platform so nice to hear that it's a, a success. Um, I have a question that is more like general industry-wise question. What do you think will happen in autumn or winter for that respect? Because, you know, a lot of people postponed their releases. A lot of people who wanted to premiere now probably will decide to premiere in autumn or in winter. And then it will all collide with festivals that if everything will start happening with Dot Leipzig and with ITFA. So how do you think it will all um, find its own way? Will it all just smash at the some like I don't know peak point when uh, cinemas will open again? All the festivals will happen again, or you think there will be certain again uh, a down wave? What are your thoughts about it? You should address your question. Who do you want to answer this? Okay, then I actually it's, for me it's 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 probably for for everyone, but I think it would be probably then more for festival people than for Zagreb Docs. Uh, it would be good to start on. Yeah, that did you? Sweet. Yeah, now, I, now you have the sound. Um, I will I will quote the the head of our uh, our epidemic uh, headquarter, who, who whenever somebody asked him a question like this, he said nobody knows what's going to happen in the autumn. Uh, I guess it's going to be. I hope it's going to be very crowded. Um, it depends, of course, uh, if the second wave of uh, infection is going to be severe or just normal. But there are still a lot of un unknown, unknown uh, uh, issues. I spoke to people at ITFA uh, and them themselves are not sure uh, if and they believe that the festival is going to take place, but they are not sure about the format, um, about uh, you know the distance in the cinemas and all this stuff. So uh, the the first question is: Are these festivals going to take place at all? That's the first question. And then, if they are, it's going to be very crowded. And as I said before, you will have. Uh, uh, I guess uh, 10, 12 major festivals and then maybe 20 or 30 smaller festivals uh, at the same time. 
And that's unfortunately or fortunately something that I see um, happening. Uh, and I don't think that there is a, a way out because for the number of reasons, uh, among other financial reasons, um, some of the festivals have to uh, happen in this calendar year or in the fin financial year, which of course is the beginning of the next year. So, uh, nobody knows for sure, but uh, I hope the, 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 the situation with epidemics is going to be uh, such that there will be uh, uh, quite an uh, overcrowded uh, situation. Since I speak now, I just want to say something else. Uh, I'm uh, also quite worried about the next year. Uh, because, number one, I believe that there will be a shortage of films because many films are not happening this year uh, or they're not finished, they're not going to be finished this year because of the restrictions in the um, uh, 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 production, post-production, financing and so on and so on. And the other issue is uh, um, it's more for the selectors. Uh, we are going to have, I guess, about half of all the films dealing with the corona crisis. <laughs> and it's going to be uh, quite difficult to uh, make a, a selection uh, because everybody will do something uh, about the corona and we can have about 20 uh, corona crises uh, festivals around the world, which I don't think our audiences will be delighted to watch because they will be hopefully fed up with the issue. So there are a lot of challenges in front of us, I guess, uh, program-wise, termin-wise, and also uh, financial and economic. But to go back to your basic question, I hope the situation is be is going to be that uh, uh, we will have a lot of festivals. But as Ulrich said, uh, uh, we don't know even if uh, Doc Leipzig is taking place, uh, which is autumn. I hope it will. I like it very much and I, I go uh, frequently there. So we'll see. Um, and then there is another issue, which is travel. The, the, the travel of the uh, juries, the travel of the uh, filmmakers, the travel of uh, professionals. Are people going to be uh, easy with uh, uh, traveling in this situation? Uh, sitting next to somebody who can be infected, so on and so on. So uh, uh, what are going to be uh, conditions to go into the country and so on and so on. So uh, it's going to change the, the festivals for sure. And I don't think that we can count on having the same format. Even if the festivals are taking place, they're going to change dramatically, at least this year, in my view. Yeah, thank you, Nenad. And uh, by the way, as, as we are all together here in this virtual room, I wonder maybe you guys, because there is a lot of pain and need and request and uh, um, also un understanding and, you know, confusion. Maybe you guys uh, have an, uh, the questions or proposal to each other. So you can, uh, if you have, let me know. If not, I have some questions from our audience else. Uh, Take, take that opportunity to, to discuss, that would be interesting. I would uh, suggest that uh, then this discussion was not in vain. If you have anything to say to, to each other and, or to ask, let me know. No? Okay. Uh, so there is a question to Ulrich from uh, our uh, viewers. So Ulrich, uh, did your programming change because of Corona crisis? Uh, and the second question, have you ever screened Ukrainian films? And which one? We can't hear you, Ulrich. At least I cannot. I can hear me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
fortunately, we didn't have to change very much, but I fully agree to what Nenad said. We will have a shortage of film in autumn or beginning of next year, the latest, because people can't film, um, can't, can't shoot. So we can't travel, we can't shoot. So we will have a shortage next year. And the second problem is um, we... Uh, one, 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 one simple example, we have a, a documentary film competition um, within the ARD network and um, it is, well, it's for, for German production companies, for German directors. And my fear is that we will get 80% corona proposals and um, of course oh, everyone is talking about corona now, but what is the situation in one and a half years when these films are supposedly have been finished and um, I think people will will be nerfed by all these corona stories and uh, um, so what what means creativity in this situation I think um, of course we have to deal with corona um, but on the other hand um, it, we also have to accept that the world goes on that life goes on and there are many, many other problems, many other topics which have to be, which have to be uh, included into documentaries, and uh, we have to focus on. Uh, yes, of course, um, we broadcast Ukrainian films. Uh, I can get you a list, uh, no problem at all. Um, uh, NBR has a strong focus on on Eastern Europe, and uh, I go to markets. I've been to Baltic Sea uh, in Riga last year, and. Uh, of course, we always welcome um, proposals from documentary filmmakers of East and Eastern Europe. Um, uh, in our, we mainly deal with co-production. So, of course, we do acquisitions, but we mainly co-produce films. And uh, maybe you can say uh, name a couple of titles. Uh of Ukrainian well, films you uh, to, 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 to be honest, uh, I'm not able to, to give you the titles right now. Okay. I would have to check it. it sure. has so no many problem. documentaries. And, uh, um, yeah. So I, I can... Okay. Uh, could I, but uh, didn't you, yes. like, answering probably what the, uh, the comments from Nenad and from Ulrich about uh, Corona films, uh, didn't you decide uh, to uh, to to direct or probably edit any, well, any I, Corona films yet? <laughs> well, unfortunately, I know already two directors who are shooting a film about uh, coronavirus. Hopefully, I will not edit none of them <laughs> and not do any. But I would propose that the festivals to do a kind of section maybe and do broadcast it online, like uh, the coronavirus films, and that will where people want to see them, they go online. I had another uh, actually question for Diana about the uh, the free, um, uh, like uh, showing film for free uh, because of like uh, fe like festivals paying the fees or because it's something new and we are not like experienced like festivals. Uh, director Doc Days, uh, Vika said about that we are doing it them for free because uh, it's something new for us. But don't you think that it's uh, underestimate the film um, more, uh, making them for free? I mean, and when you are you're having all this kind of films and festival for free and you just uh, buy the tickets uh, and you have like six films and you don't finish none of them just because they are free. And when you at least pay two euros, it's symbolic. It's have a f like psychological different uh, aspect to the viewer to kind of watch it because he really uh, put something into it? Uh, yeah, I absolutely understand this question and we have, uh, it's always the decision of the festival that they would like to go online with the free stream and I understand this decision also because um, it is it is a way to reach out. I mean, with, with Talk Alliance Films, we did, did I mean, we've been, we've existed for 15 years almost now and uh, we had free stream events before uh, very much that we would have films for free in order to actually reach out to audiences and uh, it's a big difference it's it's like thousands of people contra a couple of people and I think that with films that are not known and people don't even know that they want to watch them 
I understand that the festival is decided this way. On the other hand, for us, we tend not to do this at all anymore. And I think a solution to this is really the subscription. Because uh, our platform, for example, operates all the possible business models that you have. One is the subscription model. Uh, you subscribe for six euros. The other one is the pay-per-view, the TVOT model, where you just pick one film and stream one film or download it if you want to project it at home, for example, or something. Um, so the people who pick just the one specific film, it's a different audience than the ones that subscribe, for example. And in the subscription, you have a larger possibility to discover films that are unknown. So I think that, uh, I mean, that's the way we went. And maybe this could also be for some closed events. It could be more similar to, let's say, uh, a, uh, an accreditation. You buy an accreditation. And during a festival, you also have all these groups of people that are, you know, like going from one screening to another, from the middle of the screening and so on. So like this happens as well. But maybe this could be a, like a packaging of, of, of one subscription. Uh, but then, of course, uh, it's a very big problem with the, with the rights. And uh, no one wants to give you the subscription rights too early uh, because of broadcasters and because of the big uh, SVOD platforms as well. So, I mean, dealing with rights for online is such a complicated process. And uh, for many years, the only viable way for online distribution was actually piracy. And I was always telling that also at universities when I was teaching in but now it's, of course, uh, it's, it's changing very much. And I think that your perspective also is from a very developed market, you know, in France, in Germany, and so on. The VOD market is very much developed, and the perspective on this is very different. And uh, if you compare it to Central Europe or Eastern Europe, uh, the audiences are not that used to actually paying for films online, for audiovisual materials, or for anything. Uh, so this is maybe also a reason why, uh, why to decide to do the free stream events. I don't think it does, uh, uh, it, I don't think it takes uh, the value from, from the film in my uh, personal perspective. I think it gives a, a chance to get an audience. Uh, but on the other hand, I must say that, of course, it's, it's not the strategy we have anymore. We, we don't want to okay, really Diana. push Okay, Thanks stuff. for the answer. I think we should already end our uh, air. And the technical team is messaging me about that. And uh, before uh, we close that, uh, there is one short answer to Michal Zarecki, who asks where Ukrainian films can be screened uh, and showed uh, online. This is, uh, you can see it on Takfrix.com with Ukrainian subtitles. There are several Ukrainian documentaries and there will be even more. And uh, at 9 o'clock today there will be an award ceremony of DocuDays and you all will know who is winning and also the award ceremony for uh, people's, for the people's voting. Um, I forgot how it is translated to English, whatever. Thank you to everybody. Thank you, Mael, Ekutai, Barnenad, Uldi, Diana, and Maria that joined us in this conversation. I think it was quite an interesting one, I hope at least. And uh, I think, I hope that something will be, uh, something you will be uh, brought out and uh, maybe you will have more ideas of how to do it, or at least it had a therapeutic effect on you in such a hard time. So I hope you are all will be sane, and if we all meet at some festival, probably in Docu Days next year, or even earlier, maybe in Zagreb Docs, that will happen in the second part of the year, and uh, now we have to finish. Thank you all who was watching that, and uh, see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.